Hey everybody, the Network Berg here. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we'll be going over seven micro tick things that you need to know. Uh, these are tricks that might uh, help you with managing and administrating your micro ticks a little bit better. And I use it in my day to day life, and I figured I might just make a video about it so that other people can also reap some of the benefits. Uh, if you don't work with micro tick on a day to day basis, or you don't generally use these features, it might be something you don't know, but it is very a noob friendly. So stick around and let's jump into the rest of the video. So the first trick that you should know about is IP neighbors. Let me tell you a little bit about IP neighbors. It is a protocol running on the Mikrotix, which works similarly to a CDP on Cisco. So what it does, it discovers any remote neighbors that's connected to it either directly or uh, via some VLANs and such. And to see the IP neighbors, we can click on the IP tab and we can click on neighbors. This will give us a breakdown of all of the routers, which interfaces we're learning about them from, which IP addresses we're seeing. If there's no IP address, that's fine, but it can still learn the MAC addresses, which is quite important. You can see identity, what platform it is. So if it's Cisco, then you see there's a Cisco uh, device. So it's a switch that's plugged into this router. And that's, part, that's CDP telling the, the Mikrotik about these details. And there is the other Mikrotik routers connected on my network. And also you can see their uptime. So how long they've been up, like their system uptime. Um, that's it from Winbox. Let's quickly jump into the command line. So inside the command line, it's quite similar to Winbox. We're just going to go IP neighbors and we can print. And if you hit enter, it will give you a brief summary of all of the neighbors. But you see, sometimes it makes these dots and it's a little bit difficult to actually figure out what is going on. So whenever you print the IP neighbors, I do recommend doing it in detail. Then this will give you all of your neighbors and all of their relevant information. So there we can see which interface it's coming in, what the IP address is, what the MAC address is. That wraps up IP neighbors. Let's look at the next trick that you should know. The second trick that you should know is MAC Telnet. So what is MAC Telnet? MAC Telnet is a protocol that the Mikrotik can use in order to connect onto a MAC address instead of a IP address. I mean, if you've worked on a Cisco or a Juniper before, I'm sure it's happened to you where you've made a change and you get locked out of the router. Now you can't access it on its IP address anymore. Now you're stressing because, okay, I need somebody to physically go connect to that router in order to um, change it back or fix the issue. So Mikrotik has this awesome feature for Mac Telnet, where if the device is still reachable on layer two, which means if the VLAN can still be seen, if the MAC address is being learned, you can still connect to it on that MAC address. So we're quickly going to do that from IP neighbors. That's why I started with it. If you right click from IP neighbors and you click on Mac Telnet or you double click on one of the routers, the option for Mac Telnet is there as well. So I'm going to click on the Mac Telnet. It's going to ask you for the logon details. And now you're on the other router. We're quickly just going to do the same on the command line. So from the command line, what we'll do is we will just type in tools or tool Mac Telnet. And then we need to type in the MAC address of a device. So let, let's just use the IP neighbors to find that MAC address IP neighbor print. There's the first router. Let's just use this MAC address. So tool Mac Telnet hit enter. And same thing, admin. And now we're on the other router. So we've used, we've, we've connected to a remote router without using an IP address. So if we somehow made a mistake with the IP addressing, we can still get back on that device, which is pretty cool. The third thing that you need to know about Mikrotik is Ramon. Okay, so what is Ramon? Ramon is another Mikrotik protocol that runs over layer two that allows us to manage remote routers. It does the same thing as Mac Telnet, but it's more uh, user-friendly. Well, not I, I won't say more user-friendly, but it allows you to run it from Winbox instead of having to be on a Mikrotik router. Um, so to connect to the Ramon, what you'll do is you'll open up a Winbox session and you'll find a 
well, you'll connect to one of your management routers. So let's say this is one of my management routers and you just hit the connect to ROM on button. It will bring up a list of all of the routers that have ROM on enabled. And if you select the router, you can type in the admin details and hit connect. And then you'll be able to connect to that router to manage it. To enable ROM on, you do this from Winbox. You just go into the tools, you click on ROM on, and you hit the enable button and apply it. Now you're able to see this router on ROM on and connect to it on ROM on in order to manage your routers. The fourth trick that you should know on Mikrotik routers is how to torch traffic. So when we talk about torching traffic, it sounds pretty strange, but I want you to just imagine you're taking a flashlight and you're literally looking at an interface to see what it's doing. So this is similar to maybe running a debug on a Cisco router. So what we'll be doing is we will be going into our interfaces and in our interfaces, we can see all of the interfaces that are connected. You might have VLANs here. It doesn't matter. The torch works the same for everything. So let's say I wanted to see what's happening to uh, this interface uh, to CE1. You could just double click on the interface or you could right click it as well. There's a torch option or you can click on the torch. When you click on the torch, it brings up this window. So this window contains all of the IP address information and packet information that it can see going across the link. So here you can enable certain things uh, to collect or see. So we might be able to see the protocols, the ports, the VLANs. And when you start it, it'll just pull out everything that it sees. So here we're seeing some ping traffic and HTTP traffic uh, running across this interface. Uh, you can drill it down to specific sources if you want to see what somebody or a subnet is doing. And you can also, if you, and also if you click on the source, it will change it to that source. If you click on the destination, it will change it to that destination. So that's quite a nice thing to do. Um, other things is you could pick up how much traffic is actually going in and out of the network. So this is also a pretty useful tool to identify any bandwidth hogs on your network. So you might um, see a link is maxing out. If you go and torch the interfaces, you could see which IP address is consuming the most bandwidth because it will show you this user is using 10 meg of the 10 meg link. Um, you can see what the destination IP is and you can go onto Google or something and find out what that IP is, who it belongs to, what is this person doing. Then you can start to restrict that traffic, maybe shape it. And that makes Torch really a powerful and useful tool to use when you are administrating or managing the network. The first thing that you should know about Mikrotik is the IP scan feature. We're looking at a IP scan that we want to run on the network. It will allow us to identify which hosts are on the network. Um, think of this as a tool similar to like advanced IP scanner. I'm sure you've worked with that maybe before just to see which IP addresses are running on the network. And it does the same thing. It works really great for that. So to use an IP scan, you also just go to the tools and you can click on the IP scan. And here we can select the interface that we want to scan. So let's say I'd like to see everything that's on Ether 10, because that's going to my, my LAN, just as an example. And if I hit start, it will start to scan through all of the IP addresses. So I'm just going to stop that, because let's just define a range as well. So let's say it's 192.168.99.0 slash 24. And now it's picked up all of my IPs that's connected on this range, what their MAC addresses are, if they do have any SNMP values and your net bio settings. So that's really useful just to see what devices are running on the network. Maybe you want to find a certain printer or a switch or something. That is what you'd use these IP scan tools for. The sixth tool that I recommend that you need to know for Mikrotik is the bandwidth test. To run a bandwidth test on Mikrotik, what you'll do is you'll click on the tools button. You'll go to the bandwidth test. You'll say which server you're testing to. So this will in theory be to another Mikrotik router. It will bandwidth test server for Mikrotik works Mikrotik to Mikrotik. So let's just say we want to test to one of my management routers um, where I've configured the bandwidth test server on. You can say if it's TCP or UDP, you can say 
you just want to send, do you want to receive, do you want to send and receive data? You can make it random data, so it's just goobly gob. And importantly, you need the login credentials for the other router, so it allows you access to run the bandwidth test. So I'm just going to run it, and then you should start to see um, some data flowing over the network. There we go. Uh, it's pretty slow because I'm running this on AVM. It's on GNS3, so I'm not going to get like a gig or um, hundreds of megs. It's literally small amounts of traffic that's being pushed, but it's a great way to see what traffic is being pushed on a real network. So it's a useful tool um, to enable the bandwidth test. Very straightforward. You just go into your tools. There's a B test server. Hit apply or hit enable. Uh, if you don't enable authenticate. It means you don't need your username and password to run the test, but I highly advise against that because if you leave that unticked, that means somebody else, if they have a Mikrotik and they can get to your Mikrotik, they can potentially uh, flood your Mikrotik with traffic and almost cause like a denial of service attack. So let's not do that. Let's make sure that we authenticate the traffic at least. The seventh thing that you need to know on a Mikrotik router is the IP services, or more specifically, the FTP server that you can run on it. All right, so you should already be familiar what FTP is. Um, it's the file transfer protocol. It allows us to exchange, uh, let's say, files between uh, two different hosts. And in our case, the MikroT can act as an FTP server. Uh, this can be useful for a lot of different things. Maybe you're looking into network automation, and you could potentially then use the MikroT as a way to store backup files and then your automation server could connect to the Mikrotik and pull your configuration files off of the FTP server. Um, it could also potentially maybe upload um, new firmware onto the Mikrotik on a schedule in order to just up automate uh, that function of making sure your routers are on the newest and best um, firmware versions. You could also store other files on there. I mean, it's an FTP server. But the Mikrotiks aren't designed by default to be an FTP server. It's, it's just a function that's there in case you need it. So to enable FTP, you'll just go into the IP services. And then here it is. By default, it is enabled. You can, if it's disabled like this, it's grayed out. You can just hit the check. It will enable it. You can also set the port. If you feel like you need a different port, you can use 21, 21 or, or whatever you feel like, but let's use 21 in our case. And you could also set an available from address. So you could restrict this to a management range or to certain devices to make sure that um, malicious users don't connect to this Mikrotik and start causing havoc through the FTP. Um, so let's just connect onto the FTP quickly. I'm just going to Connect to this Mikrotik again. Let's open up a new file. FTP 168.99. Let's connect to another one. It'll prompt you for credentials. So this would be whatever admin account or whatever account you've created for the FTP access. When we log in you've logged into the Mikrotik router on its file system and now you can transfer files and pull files through the FTP. That wraps up the FTP portion. All right guys, that's the end of the video. There's uh, seven things that I do believe you need to know when you're working on Mikrotik routers. It does uh, help ease a lot of the administration and management. And uh, if you learn something new, I'm happy. If I maybe helped you refresh a new skill, I'm happy as well. Uh, if there's anything that you'd like to see, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, also, I'd like to remind you to just subscribe to the channel, like the video, reshare it with your friends. It does help grow the channel. Thanks again for watching.